Greetings, Mount Zion. Thank you for, again, letting us into your small group or into your home and on the studies. Uh, this week's message was on confession. The first thing I want to say is it's really hard to divide confession and forgiveness, but in a few weeks, we're going to talk about forgiveness. This week, we talk about confession, like admitting you're wrong. I I'm, I'm sorry I was wrong. Please forgive me. There's so much discussion that comes after that, but we started in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, where it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, you know, and, and turn from their evil ways. So in that text, in chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles, there's confession, there's repentance, there's turning around, doing everything we as human beings need to do so that God can forgive us. It's such a powerful thing, and it's such a humbling thing. Uh, 1 John 1, 9 tells us that God will forgive us and cleanse us, and he'll erase the blackboard full of our sins. And he doesn't remember it. He doesn't dig it up. He doesn't keep bringing it back to us. That's what the enemy does. The accuser of the brethren will come back and do that. I want to remind you of the reasons to confess sins one to the other is for accountability and encouragement. And I also want to bring up the fact that we in the church need to understand how to deal with confession and somebody coming forward saying, hey, I've sinned. Um, we have to be so careful that we don't condemn that person right away and that we don't look down on them because it took courage for them to come and say, hey, I was wrong and I'm caught in this sin. And our job is to remind them of the forgiveness that there is in Christ. And then in love, hold them accountable and help them have victory over sin. You know, that's where confession is so important. It's that step that says, hey, I was wrong. You know, I, I did this. Will you please forgive me? And that's huge. Um, it's individual and it's corporate. We have to do it individually in our lives, but as a church and even as nations, you have to do it. Um, so I want to encourage you that confession will lead to forgiveness and forgiveness opens the door for blessings from God and from the people around us. And the blessing is there can be peace and confessing our sins can deal with the enmity that comes between us and God and between us and other people. And then there can be peace and we can live the way Jesus wants us to live in harmony with each other. And then we can join together and really make an impact in this world for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as I close this, I wanna ask you, is there, is there sin in your life that you have not confessed that is holding you down. And that is in, in Psalm 32, where he says, while I kept silent, while I didn't confess, God's hand was heavy upon me. And then he says, when I admitted it, when I confessed, when I came clean with God, I was set free. And then there were songs of deliverance. So in closing, I just wanna say, rather than looking at how hard it is to confess and come clean, Look at the deliverance and the peace and the joy that comes from just saying, hey, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. God bless you.